Hi, Nidia. Hi, good evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm uh, fine. Thank you. All right. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. How was your day? Uh, it was awful, but just work. All right. Okay. All right. Very good. Hi, Manuel. Hi, Manuel. Manuel. Hi, good night. Good evening. How are you? I'm amazing. Uh, I'm very tired because I I need work in my house. Yeah, eh? it's tiring to work. All right, from home. Very good. Hi, Julia. Hello. How are good you evening. today, Julia? Fine, thanks. Excellent. Very good. Did you guys uh, get the PowerPoint and the audios on the WhatsApp group? Yes. All right, very good. Were you able to download them? Yes, I download. Yeah. All right, very good. Okay, so remember that you can either download the PPT or the audios, whatever works for you. I send both um, files just in case you rather one or the other one, all right? Very good, so we have already, oh, Saida, hi, Saida. All right, so guys, this is the very last day of the week. Okay, so we're gonna be finishing section uh, section two today. All right, so next week, the whole week, we're going to be talking and doing exercises of speaking. And the very last week, we're gonna talk about writing, okay? So today is the last class for the listening section. And we are going to uh, work on the very last type of questions that we have on that section which is connecting questions all right so that's what we have uh for you guys tonight you have the powerpoint anyhow so you can like either watch it with me or you have it with you right so let's start so here we have have Eve hi evelyn all hi. right so we have the connected questions these particular questions are a little bit tricky because you need to pay attention to everything, all right? Like not just about details or processes or like what they mean, it's just about everything, okay? So that's why these type of questions are a little bit more complex. I mean, uh, if you practice, it won't be that difficult, all right? So connecting content questions, this is what we have. What do they ask from you? Uh, Manuel, can you read that please? Okay ask you to understand relationship relationship amongst ideas in a lecture very good so they ask you to understand relationships among ideas in a lecture all right so it's like ah uh, when you say relationships is everything going on in a lecture all right manuel keep on uh, keep on reading please they will ask you to put together information for different sentences for different part of the conversation or lecture. Very good, thank you. So they will ask you to put together information from different sentences from different parts of the conversation or lecture or a speech that someone is giving, all right? So to everything. All right, let's go on here. Julia, can you, can you read this please? Okay. Steps in a process cause effect classification make a prediction <clears throat> thank you so here some of these questions they will ask you to pay attention to the steps in a process all the questions within these type of questions they're going to talk about or they're going to ask you to have like the cause and effect all the types of questions they're going to like they will want you to work on classification and all their types of questions they will ask you to make a prediction and all the types of questions within these questions, they will ask you to do everything, all right? And they will ask you not only about steps in a process, but they will also ask you about to make a prediction. Now, what's curious about these type of questions is that these type of questions, usually they ask you for two choices instead of only one, right? <clears throat> so you have four options. 
And from those four, you have to choose two. Okay, so you have to pay attention to everything because as I said, sometimes the first question is going to be more related to the steps in the process and the other part of the same question is gonna ask you to like answer like on cause and effect. So that makes it a little bit complex because you have to listen to everything, okay? Do you understand what I'm saying? Hello, guys, Nidia, yeah. Manuel, yeah? Yes. 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 All Thank right. You. Very good. Okay. Let's go on here. Now, a tip that the uh, video, if you have not watched it, but it's the same thing here. One of the tips that we can tell you is you need to stop. I mean, it's really hard to do this because remember that when you're taking TOEFL, it's being timed, okay? And you are under pressure of the time running, all right? But even though you have a little bit kind of like, okay, what, what happened here on this lecture, on this conversation, then you need to summarize it really quickly in your mind and then you have to predict if that would be the case, all right? But it's always like very, like it's a very good idea to kind of like, okay, you listen to the whole lecture, you listen to the whole conversation and then you want to see if you can summarize it quickly in your mind, all right? Or if you're taking notes. As I've said this to you before, like through the whole week, if you are able to take notes while you're listening, that's a plus for you. But not everybody is keen on doing that, all right? Because either you take notes or you listen, or you listen and you take notes. So it's very difficult, but some people are very skillful and they can do uh, those like two things at the same time. If you, I mean, this is a matter of practice again, so I would suggest for you to like listen to whatever, for example, a, a part of a conversation somewhere on, on like from online, and then you can like pay attention and just kind of like, as you're listening, you're taking notes. Or that, that would help you improve that skill. But don't go to TOEFL saying, okay, while I'm listening, I'm gonna take notes, and you have not practiced it and you haven't done it before because it's gonna be a mess. All right, because you will realize that as, as, as you're writing, you're missing important information while you're listening. All right, so don't go to TOEFL test thinking that you're going to be taking notes or summarizing within the same activity because you may get lost, all right? So take that always that in, like, into consideration and just practice, practice, practice before you actually go and you are able to say, okay, I can do this, at the same time I'm doing the other thing, all right? So that's like a very, I think, um, a good idea for you to follow. Hi, Maribel. I didn't see you coming in, Roberto. All right, so we have here, <clears throat> let's see. Okay, TOEFL listening, all right, good evening. So we have connecting information questions, all right? So let's see, um, Saida, do you mind reading for me, please? Okay, teacher. Connecting information question require you to make connection between or among pieces of information in the text. Okay, continue. Your ability to integrate information from different parts of the listening passage to make inference to draw conclusions. Mm -hmm. To draw conclusions through to for generalizations and to make prediction in tests. Is tested. To choose the right. All right, continue, continue, that's okay. To choose the right answer, you will need to be able to identify and explain relationship among ideas and details in a text. Very good. Okay. These relationships may be explicit or implicit. There are three types of connecting information Strong question. All right, very good. So listen to this. Let's go back to the second paragraph where it says your ability to integrate information from different parts of the listening passage, to make inferences, to draw conclusions, to form generalizations, and to make predictions is tested. So as I said at the very beginning, this type of question is not only testing you if you're able to make predictions, but it's also testing you if you're able to integrate information or to draw conclusions or to make inferences. So this type of question is a little bit more complex because since they are asking you two questions or to, like they want two answers from you, since that very moment, they want you to know more and to understand more. 
All right, so what they are testing from you is a little bit more complex. Let's go on. Hi, Freddy. Good evening. All right, very good. Uh, let's see. Robert, can you continue reading, please? Stop for listening. Connecting, connect, uh, connecting content questions. Okay. Stop for listening. Connecting content questions. Connecting content questions measures uh, your understanding of the relationship among ideas in a text. Okay. These relationships may be explicitly, explicitly, explicitly yeah. stated or you may have to infer them from the words you hear. Okay. The question may ask you to organize information in a different way from the way it, it was presented in the listening passage. Ah, okay, go on. How to recognize connection content, content questions. How can be inferred about X? Well, what can be inferred about X? Mm -hmm. What does the professor imply about X? Tips for the connecting questions. Question that re requires you to fill in a chart or table or put events in order fall into this category. As you listen to letters, uh, to, to the lectures. letters accompanying, to lectures accompanying, uh, this is a study guide. Pay attention to the way you format your notes. Clearly identifying terms and their definitions, as well as steps in a process, will help you answer questions of this type. In connecting content questions, you will have to use information from more than one place in the listening passage. Very good, thank you, Robert. Okay, so what, it's, what this is like really telling you here is that these questions are a little bit more complex, all right, because you have to do a lot of like things that you have learned before in these questions, okay? So for example, it says questions, uh, you will, as you listen to lecture accompanying this study guide, pay attention to the way you format your notes, again, you need to know how to take notes. If you take TOEFL 3, the course TOEFL 3, and you take it with me, I will show you a way of how to take notes, okay? Because TOEFL 3 teaches you that, that course, all right? Now, if, uh, let's, let, I don't know if you are gonna take it with me or not, but whoever teaches TOEFL 3 should help you to, like, for you to know how to take notes, especially for this test. All right, so because you're supposed to make it like fast and clear and everything. So there's a technique also, okay? So if we take TOEFL 3 together, I will show you and I will guide you on how to take notes because it's not just any like note taking. You need to be like a little bit more precise and, and clear and, and you take your notes, all right? So again, here, as this is saying, that you need to understand the relationship of what's going on within the passage, all right? So it's, it's a little bit more complicated. If you notice, these type of questions is not like only, for example, um, what, why did the professor say this? They, they mix their questions. It's not just one, only one type of um, structured questions, all right? For example, here, if you notice, this is what can be inferred, and you have studied that before in inferring questions, all right, inferring questions. So here is, like I said already, it's a mix of many type of questions within the connecting content questions. Now, what we're about to do is I have divided this. That's why I sent, I think I sent eight questions because the, fir the first three, all right, we're going to be trying to like organize the other four, we're trying to like structure things in a process. And the very last question, it would be a real type of question on this kind of, or, or, or on this type of question. So I have divided it. So we go like a step by a step for you to get to the real question at the very end. Okay. So uh, I don't know if you have questions for me right now. Whoa. Do you have questions for me right now, guys? No. No questions? No. Are we okay? No. Yeah, all right. So this is what we're going to do. These um, listenings are not that long, all right? These first three, the ones that you're looking at on the screen right now, 
For example, number one, it says, in the lecture, you're gonna to listen to a lecture, the speaker describes the step in pigeons training, indicate whether each of the following is a step in the process. So it's uh, six, two, four, five choices. And with together, for example, if I'm working with Maribel, we will decide as we listen to the lecture about pigeons, if letter A, it indicates a step in a process. If it is, if it indicates it, then we check on yes. If it doesn't, we then we indicate it in no. And that's how you have to work on uh, through the first question. On the second question, it says in the lecture, you have another lecture. In the lecture, the professor describes events that under, uh, under, undermine, sorry, the gains the suffragettes had made in women's right indicate whether each of the following is an event that hampered the movement all right so the question is right there so you have to listen and then you have again you go over each of them and then you check yes or you check no and the same thing for number three now, suggestion here that we have the time i want you to before you uh, before you start listening with your partner i want you to read the question and read the choices so you get a you get like an idea of the vocabulary they are using. What are the choices be, like given to you? And try to see if you find those choices within the lecture. So as soon as you start working, don't click the listening button right away. Read first, okay? Read number one, and then you listen to number one. Before you listen to number two, read number two, and then you listen to number two. Then you read number three, and then you listen to number three. Now, this, remember that this is a practice. You can do that here with me in the class, not in a real TOEFL, because they just play the audio, and then you start listening, and you have not time to read beforehand. That's not true. I mean, you got enough time to do it, and they only play it once. Here, you can play it again and again and again, all right? So that, that's what we're going, to, uh, we're going to be working with right now. So right now, the first audio that I sent is question that it says questions one, two, three, is for this one right here. The other one I sent is this one, that it says questions from four to seven. So the first one is four, then the, the next one is five. The, uh, the one right after that is number six, and the last one is seven. And this one is the last one, all right? Please work in order, work from one, two, three, four to seven, and then this one is the last question. And your audios are organized that same way, all right? Do you have any questions okay. or you understand what you're going to be working with right now? Well, uh, I do have a question. Uh, yes. At the PowerPoint presentation, did you have included all the audios? Yes, I have. Okay. Let me double check, but I believe I did. Yes, I did. Yeah, they are there. If okay, you notice, you. if you can see my presentation, which is the same as you have, we have the, uh, the bu button here for the sound. Can you see it? Can you see it? Guys, can you see the, the yes. button, the volume button? The speaker yes. button? Okay. Yes, yes. So that you click on it and then you listen to the audio, the same thing on the other one and the same thing to the third one. I have included all the audios right here. So that's what I'm saying. If you prefer to um, open up right now the presentation because you have the question and the audio, go ahead. If you rather have the audio, only the audios and then kind of like either you have it next to you, the presentation is really up to you. But what I want you to do is I want you to read before you listen. Okay, yes, or if you want to take pictures right now, it's up to you how you want to work it. All right, the one, Maribel, this one, Maribel, uh -huh. that's Thanks. the one you want, yeah. Thanks. All right, what about this one, Maribel? You have this one? No. Okay. All right, very good. Okay, guys, so we're going to, I'm going to stop sharing. All right, and you're going to go to your groups and please read before you listen. Read number one, listen to number one. Read number two, listen to number two and go on like that. That's going to be easier. All right, so you get 
familiar with the vocabulary and what they're talking about, okay? All right, hold on, yes. let's see, we have, yeah. All right, so Nidia, uh, Maribel and Saida, you're working together, Freddie and Roberto, you're working together, Evelyn and Manuel, and I'm gonna move you right now because you're working by yourself. Oh no, she's there. Hi, Freddy, there you go.
about B, I think so far that it's the second one, the second step. After B, the third step will be D, increasing the bird's stamina through extending the flight distance. I think that that's the in third that, step. In this one, I, I was a little confused. <laughs> but yeah, could that be was when D. she said that she started to set free just like three miles away from home, five miles away from, from home, uh, the bird. Yeah. To increase the stamina. Okay. After that, uh, they, she said that they uh, that they made a test for every bird. That is to release it with with other birds. Just like a uh, just uh, in a central the meeting place, just like a park. I think that that would be the fourth uh, the fourth step, and the last one is the getting the bird to uh, well the sea. Removing the tag when the bird enters the, the coat, because that was the last thing that she said. That she removed the tag and put it inside of just like a clock to have just like uh, a report of the evolution of this bird, of the progress of, of the bird. But I don't know, I don't know what you do you think about it. About the order, I mean. Mm -hmm. Okay. In oh, I I have some troubles with the, with my PC. I'm okay. so sorry, Robert, because I'm trying to uh, open the document, and I I could I could read the first one but the next i don't know why but i i, I can't have some internet issues <laughs> are you able to see it now mm, no no right now I'm, I'm sharing the screen oh please please i'm so sorry read Have you, have you, I have a number mate. one? Okay, have number one I have, yeah. Hi. I have that the first step it's A, the second one it's B, the third one it's D as in dog, mm -hmm. the third one it's E, and the last one it's C. All right, so, um, but these questions, uh, Roberto, what they yeah. want you to do is to indicate whether each of the following is a step in the process. So whatever you were listening to, for example, somewhere in the, in the lecture, she mentioned yeah. giving the young pigeons short practice flights. Is that yeah. a step in the process? Yes or no? If it's yes, just check on yes. If it's no, then okay. check on no. All right? So right now we're yeah, not reading this. Every single one of them. Mm -hmm. Go but ahead. Every single one of, of them was, was a step on the process. I was not mentioning all of the them. Ordered, uh, not, not all of them. them. No. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the pigeon train, the only one that is not part of it is removing the tag. Okay. Because because that's not part of the train. That's part right. of the process okay. to keep a, a record of the progress of the bird. All right. So that's a no. Number one and that's number two no. is a yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, number and then you three, have an, no, uh -huh. it's, it's yes, number, the, the letter D and letter E. Letter D, yes. And letter E as well, yes. According, since, since it's just like a test that they do made uh, to, to the birds. Mm -hmm. to well, check listen, if they listen, have to listen again, the listen again with Freddy and discuss letter E, because according to the answers that should be a no, but go ahead and reread it or re listen to it, all right? But you guys are yeah. doing fine. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you. 
I take a picture of the document of the teacher. In the lecture, the speaker describes the steps in pigeon training. Indicate whether each of the following is a... Did you, did you catch something? Yes, the letter B and the letter C is part of the process that the speaker described. Okay. Which which letters did you did you girls mention? Letter B and letter C. Letter B and letter C. Oh, interesting. What about the, the what about the rest? I I think the letter E two. Letter E two. Mm. All right. Yes. Can you can you do me a favor? Can you play the audio again? Okay. Exercise L16, recognizing information. One. The homing instinct of pigeons. Um, pigeons have a homing instinct, and this is what makes them popular for racing. But you have to start training a bird when it's young. So a bird's training begins when it's about seven year, oh, excuse me, seven weeks old. At first, this training consists of giving it short exercise flights, teaching the bird to recognize its owner's call. It also has to be taught to enter its coat. Oh, a coat, the pigeon's home. Then the next phase, when the bird is about four months old, the next phase of training is started. In this stage, the pigeon is taken short distances from its home and then released. So the distance of these flights is gradually extended from three miles up to a hundred miles as the bird's stamina increases. And then when the bird, the pigeon is ready, the owner may enter it in a race against other trained pigeons. So the owners take their birds to a central meeting place and all the birds are tagged. The tag is a small metal ring attached to one leg. Then they are released all at once, simultaneously. All these birds take off for home. Now a bird is not considered to be home until it has entered its coat. That's why it's important to teach it to enter its coat. And its owner removes the tag and this is inserted into this special kind of clock that records the bird's arrival time. Oh, because Owners live at different distances from the release point. The first pigeon home may not be the fastest flyer. It's the bird that makes the best time in flying the distance home. That bird is the winner. In lecture. Okay, I listen that letter A, B, and C. All right, letter A, B, yes. Yes, and letter B, yes, and letter C. All right, and what about D and E? Letter E. Mm -hmm. All right. Letter E. And letter D. <laughs> All right, okay. All right, you're, you're, you guys are getting, you're, you're getting it right. I mean, A and B, yeah. All right, A and B is a yes. All right, letter D is also, they talk about the distance, all right? Now, as, like she mentions those three, like let's say um, it steps in the process right away and then she pauses, all right? And then she starts talking about something else and then she mentions about letter E and goes back to letter C, but it's not a process anymore. She finished talking about the process before that, all right? So letter A, B and letter D, it, take, it talks like exactly about the process, all right? This happens first and then this and then that, all right? When it, she starts talking about letter E, it's not really saying it's, this is what happens next. It's just, it, she tells you, all right? But it's not really following a process anymore. You, you know what I'm saying? Okay. All right. Then let A, B, C is yes. A, B, D is yes. A, B, D, oh, okay. Right, yes. All right, very good. 
All right, I'll let you work with number two then, all right? Okay. Good. See, but because of women and equal rights being harmed by discriminatory legislation, ERA, uh, um, Equal Rights Amendment, was introduced in 1923. This was a special time when the feminist symbolized a young generation of women. It was a time in America's history, young women were carefree, exuberant, eager to break out of traditional roles and enjoy personal independence. All this optimism came to an end during the Great Depression, an economic crisis precipitated by a stock market crash in 1929, okay? At the depth of the Depression, over one third of the labor force, uh, let me repeat that, one third of the labor force, that is one out of every three people was unemployed. As you can imagine, as men lost their jobs, they, they became resentment, uh, resentful. They became resentful toward those women who had jobs, whose jobs were protected because of the uh, Equal Rights Amendment. This resentment became widespread, and laws were passed that restricted women's rights. One such law was the Married Persons Clause, okay? The Married Persons Clause prevented the civil service from hiring more than one member of a family. This law left many... Do you want to read, Saida? Okay. In the lecture, the professor describes relationship with, with, between arms and outfits. Indicate whether each of the following is a benefit that outfit get from arms. Uh, metabolism of sap, production of honey dew, building honey of dew. shelter. Protection for predators or transportation to fresh leaf. Okay. What's the meaning of aphids? Ants or migas? Huh? Ants or migas, aphids are abejas. Abejas, aphids. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Three. Girls, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you, can you stop the, the audio? I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. What, did, what was uh, your answers for number two? A, B, C, D. <laughs> what, was, what was the yes and what was the no? 
A, B, C, D, yes, E, no. A, B, C, D, yes, and E, no. Yes. All right, so B, C, E, uh, let's see, <laughs> A, B, A is no, A is a no. A, no. Yeah, and B, C, D is a yes, and E is a no. Look at the, uh, I'm just gonna show you this like really quickly so we can like. The num number one. Yeah, I'm gonna give it to you Maribel right in a second. Uh, check this one, if you can see my, my presentation right now. Uh, it says, well, the Equal Rights Amendment passed in 1923. Look at the question, it says, what indicate whether each of the following is an event that hampered the movement? Hamper is to stop, to bloquearlo, kind of okay. thing, like obstaculizarlo, all right? So the okay. Equal Right Amendment passed in 1923 is the opposite. It didn't stop it, it didn't block it, it helped it. Yes? It's logical. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> and then, so, <laughs> and so, then so, also letter E, the, yeah. Also the breaking away from traditional roles is a no, right? Because it didn't, I mean, it didn't block it. Letter B, letter C, and letter D, they blocked the uh, the whole movement, right? Okay, thank you. Yeah, all right, very good. And number one? Number one, you tell me, uh -huh, Maribel, what do you have? <laughs> My God. <laughs> uh, letter A is a yes or a no? Yes. Excellent, all right. <laughs> letter B is a yes or a no? I think it's yes. Yes, it is. Very good. What about letter C? Is yes. Ah. No. <laughs> Hold on. What about letter D? Decreasing the hers. Uh, go standing the flight distance. The letter D, uh, I think is no. All right. And the last one? Letter E? Listen the verb with other verbs from a central meeting place. No. All right. Okay. All right. Letter A is a yes. Letter B is a yes. Letter C is a no. Letter D is a yes. And letter E is a no. D, yes. And E is no. A, B, and D, they are yes. C and E, they are no. Mm hmm right mm -hmm. okay right. thank you yep you're welcome continue okay. i'll go away <laughs> okay. so rely on the aphids to get the sap for them the aphids are not well adapted for fighting off predators and consequently they rely on ants to provide this protection service for them See the mutualism? Both these creatures, ants and aphids, benefit from this arrangement of close cooperation. This relationship is somewhat analogous to the relationship between cattle and human beings. In the lecture, the professor describes a relationship between ants and aphids. Indicate whether each of the following is a benefit that aphids get from ants. Okay. What is a thing? What? It's kind of like a bee. It's like a. Uh, kind of like a. Okay, okay, same. Okay. Uh, I don't understand. What do you think? What do you thought? What is the question? Hi. Uh huh. No, I say that that I didn't question? understand. I didn't understand the meaning of aphids. And the teacher saying it, that is a type of or like a bee. 
like a bean, the similar for the bean. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Mm. Letter A. Try, try to first. I don't <laughs> pay attention very well. Okay, try to test to try. The professor describes a relationship between and and up. Indicate whether each of the following is a benefit that I get. Uh -huh. No, try to try to put the, the audio again. again. And, and, uh, okay. okay. Holding of shelter. Okay. And hold on. Exercise L's. Okay. So, symbiotic relationship three. In the natural world, a multitude of symbiotic relationships has developed um, between different organisms. In many of these, the partnership is one sided. In other words, one of the symbionts the two creatures involved in the partnership, one of the symbionts benefits from the association while the other may be harmed by it. Sometimes two species develop a relationship that is beneficial to both parties. This is called mutualism. Okay, so a symbiotic relationship in which both organisms benefit is called mutualism. Let me give you an example of such an alliance. The relationship of ants and aphids. Aphids are tiny pear-shaped insects that typically feed exclusively on a particular plant. I think most of you have seen them. They live in crowded clusters on the underside of leaves or on stems. Mm -hmm. The aphid's mouth parts are adapted to piercing plant tissue and sucking out the sap. They're very efficient at getting the sap, but they can't metabolize it all, so they have to get rid of it, okay? So, from the back of the insect are two cornicles, kind of like a tailpipe of a car, protruding from the back of the insects. The aphids get rid of this sap by secreting it from these tailpipes, these cornicles. Um, this sap, a sticky substance called honeydew is high in nutritive value. The honeydew falls onto the ground or onto the leaves of the plant and is collected by ants. The ants use this honeydew substance as a food source. Some ant species stroke the back end of aphids. Sometimes these aphids are called the ants' cows. The ants stroke the aphids with their legs and antennae in order to stimulate the flow of the honeydew liquid. It's thought that aphids may actually withhold the honeydew, waiting until ants caress them. Some ants take care of whole herds of aphids. They build shelters for the aphids and carry them to new plants, to new plants when the old plants die. So the aphid's mouth parts, as I said, are adapted to piercing the leaves and sucking out sap. In contrast, the ants' mouth parts are not well modified for getting the sap from plants. So the ants rely on the aphid to get the sap for them. The aphids are not well adapted for fighting off predators, and consequently they rely on ants to provide this protection service for them. See the mutualism? Both these creatures, ants and aphids, benefit from this arrangement of close cooperation. This relationship is somewhat analogous to the relationship between cattle and human beings. In the lecture, the professor describes a relationship between ants and aphids. Indicate whether each of the following okay. is a benefit that yes. aphids get from uh, ants. I understand. 
Okay. Guys, I'm sorry. Okay. An aphid is not really a bee. It's more like a pulga. Uh, but a big pulgita. Yes. It's not a normal pulga, but it's a little like a pulgong, it says. But I don't know. It's like an insect. <laughs> It's a, it's a it's an ant, but it's a big ant. Uh -huh, I think so. <laughs> I saw it. I saw the. I saw the. Yeah, the, the picture. About, ah, all right, okay. The, the, that ant and in the Africa, and ah. the ants make a, a a honey. It's a it's a little. How do you say, pildora or or like a pill? It's a it's it's the similar for gota. A drop. It's a job for 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 honey, and he puts uh, the down down the air, and uh -huh. it's a delicious, it's a delicious honey. Oh my Africa. goodness! It's a very expensive. Oh my goodness! And <laughs> yes, cool. Maybe and it, for me, I like to I, I like to taste it. Maybe yeah, no kidding, eh? Yeah. When the coronavirus finish. <laughs> Yeah, and true. That's a good for, idea. Yes. For letter, for letter A is yes. For production of honey is yes. The building is, uh, building shelters is yes. Mm -hmm. Production for a uh, protector from the predator is not. The transportation to French lift is yes. For you, Ellen. And um, for me, letter A is yes. Uh, yes, obviously, letter B. Uh -huh. Letter C, yes. Uh, protection for um, helpers is not. And um, transportation to price leave, um, I'm not sure. Right now, um, it would. I mean, we're running out of time, but I'm. You have the presentation anyway, all right. So I want you to listen yeah. to it again because you need to really understand the question, all right. The professor describes the relationship between an ant and an aphid, all right. Indicate whether each of the following, the the following options that we have, is that the aphid gets from the ant is not telling you what the aphid does. What are the benefits that these insects get from ants, all right? So I want you to think about the question again. Think about how they, the aphids get, like they get benefits from the ants and answer the questions again, A, B, C, D, and E, all right? You understand what I'm saying? No. Uh -uh. All right, hold on, hold on, where am I here? Okay, the question. I think we're not really understanding the question. I think we misunderstood the question a little bit. Okay, because what I want you to do is can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, so the question here says that you need to indicate whether what you're reading, these five choices, they are benefits that aphids get from ants. All right, so num letter A, for example, metabolizing of sap is not a benefit that the aphid gets from ants. If you would listen again, it's not a benefit. They don't get benefit from it. They have to do it themselves. They don't take advantage of it. All right, the ant mm -hmm. makes the shelters for the aphids. All right, so that would be a yes. All right, so that's why I'm asking you, like, you have the, the presentation anyway, so I would, like, I would like you to listen to it again whenever you have time and kind of like try to like read the question again and see if it matches what you're listening to what you're reading. Yeah? Yes, maybe okay. the, the book in for that moment is don't read previously the, the, right. the question. For okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. We're go um, we're gonna go back because I have a class right now. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher.
All right, hi guys. Hey, I'm sorry it took a little bit, but I was working with um, the other, the other um, students that we have here. Um, so I'm gonna send the answers anyway. We didn't have time to finish everything because you, it takes a while to understand everything, which is okay. But today is Thursday, so that means that maybe you can uh, like listen to the PowerPoint again. Like you, you have the PowerPoint anyway, so I invite you to try to like listen, like to, to keep on listening to the other audio, so you can uh, like practice it. All right. I'm just gonna tell you the answers. I'm gonna type them anyway, so you can double check. For number one, A was yes, B was yes, C was no. D was yes, and E was no. For number two, A and E are no. B, C, and D, they are yes. For number three, A and B, they are no's, and C, D, and E, they are yes, okay? And I'm gonna send the answers for the other, the other four questions. And the last one, so yeah, I hope you have time to work it on your own, so you keep on practicing, all right? But I really need to go right now, guys. Um, I'll see you, tomorrow we have no class, all right? So I'll see you Monday, all right? All right, guys, so thank you okay. very much. Bye, have a great weekend, all right? Be safe. Si no tiene que salir, no salga. All right, very good. <laughs> Bye, good night. Bye, thank you.